Hey, welcome back to Off the Fence with Finch. I'm Finch, and ladies and gentlemen, my next guest is a transformation coach who's lost 70 pounds in a span of a year. She survived a divorce, depression, and a drive-by shooting all while building a platform, becoming a brand, and mentoring young girls through her volleyball club and community. And she's here today to share some secrets on how you can transform your mind and your body. And we're getting in the fireside chat with her right now. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome Coach Makia. Hey, Finch. Can you hear me? I can hear you fine. Okay. How you doing? I am amazing. How are you? I am fantastic and fabulous. Can you hear me? That was me? amazing. <laughs> yeah, she's lost over 70 pounds, ladies and gentlemen. All right. So, so, so let's say. You hail from the Midwest. East St. Louis, Illinois, to be exact. East Saint, you better represent now, okay? <laughs> East St. Louis. That, that was a matter of fact. Let me get you straight, Ray Crow. Not Midwest. Let me go tighten you up. Because I see tighten how you, you do people. Okay, you know what I'm talking about. You know how we do around here. Okay, so so East St. Louis and uh -huh. I, I I I must say I find your story very interesting. You lost seventy pounds, yes, sir, in the span of a year. Now that in itself had to be very challenging at times, correct? Oh no, extremely challenging. Um, just to kind of give you a backstory on it, wait, I'm an, a former a athlete. Minute, I still like to call myself. Wait, wait a minute, what are you doing? <laughs> Oh, I'm getting my detox tea together. <laughs> oh my goodness! I thought Where you was in here. Place? Oh, listen! I thought you was in here making moonshine. <laughs> <laughs> Not about making no moonshine. So, again, I I used to play volleyball. Um, so I've been through quite a lot as an athlete. I was the first female pole vaulter out of East St. Louis. Ran track for the greatest coach in the world, which is Coach uh, Nino Fanoy, who was Jackie Joyner Kersey's coach, Don Harper's coach. So I came from, you know, an amazing program. But on my body, it took a toll. So having four knee surgeries and going through a lot of those things that you said, I gained a lot of weight over time. Mm -hmm. And as I gained that weight, one of the biggest moments was that drive by shooting that really kind of put that nail in the coffin for me. Um, my then at the time, fiance and I were in the car in East St. Louis and it was a Dodge Charger. You know, tenant windows, the, the thing that we like at home and in the hood. Um, and I just did some regular movement. You know, I pulled in the driveway. He get his, you know, he was getting his mail from his mom's house. I pulled back out. He forgot something. I pulled back in. So in the hood, it looks like some suspicious movement, like it's somebody doing something criminal. But for me, we were just to say they started shooting at the car. 13 bullets hit the vehicle. Whoa. None hit our body. But you got to know when you go through something like that, it's traumatic. And so mm -hmm. I ended up having PTSD. I'm eating pans of cornbread in the bed, rolls of cookies in the bed. You know, I'm eating my way through this thing. And I had gotten up to 215 pounds. And at that point, I was already about 180. So I was really overweight already. I was, I'm was i only 5'6". Um, and so that affected my asthma. You know, I've been born with asthma. I couldn't breathe. So now I got bad knees, bad back, and bad lungs. It was too much going on, right, at the same time. And that was one of the inspirations for my transformation. There's a lot of bad going on at one time, huh? It was it was too much going on at one time for me. Okay, so 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 this happened in what year? The car accident was January fifteenth, twenty fifteen. All right, so a little bit over six years ago, and what was it that said, "Hey, you know what? This is the day that I'm going to transform my mind so that I can transform my body." So, as a coach, you know, you mentioned that I'm a volleyball coach. And I talk about health with the girls all the time and how important it is to stay healthy and eat right. And I saw myself taking their pretzels, taking their cookies. But then at home, I'm doing the very things I'm telling. Listen, we trifling sometimes because it's do as I say and not as I do. And mm -hmm. so I'm telling them to do all these things. And I'm like, wait a minute. And then I would have moments where, you know, my former husband was telling me I wasn't breathing in my sleep. And then I was having issues just walking and being out of breath. So mm -hmm. I went to my doctor because I use this thing called a rescue inhaler and I was using it more than you should. 
And the doctor was like, listen, it's not going to rescue you because you're not having an asthma attack. And he wouldn't tell me that I'm overweight because they rather push pills. Right? right. Let me get you this anxiety medicine. Let me get you to calm down, blah, blah, blah. But the reality was I was fat and I was mm. out of shape and I was overweight. And so when he told me that my rescue inhaler wouldn't save me and I could literally die, you know, and have an asthma attack and, and it wouldn't do what it's supposed to do. I said, OK, Mike, you got to get it together. And then my mom started getting me clothes with extra X's on it. Right. You used to have like a small or a medium or a large and somebody shows up with an XL and then you got a two XL. And it's like, wait a minute. <laughs> but I didn't see myself getting bigger until mm. my mom saw it. And she said, I was so afraid for you. Your mm. nose started spreading and your cheeks was getting wide. And, and it was really terrifying. But I didn't want to identify with who I saw in the mirror. I didn't want to believe that I had let myself get that out of control. And I was really just blaming everything on my life, my relationship, the stresses in my marriage, what's going on with my businesses, everything in the community. I was pointing to everyone except me. So I looked myself in the mirror and I said, you got to get it together. Hmm. This is the last day that you're going to be this fat. Now, you know, it's a uh, it's a uh, call for the cavalry when the X's start coming in. We're not talking about X lovers. We're talking about X larger, triple X. We're talking X about X. on them sides. Yeah, 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 yeah. It, it's serious business when Absolutely. they bring in anything over a large they bring in for you, you know. And so funny now, my mom has also transformed. So she's now a 7, 8. We were both in the 16, 18 range. And so mm -hmm. you can't tell her anything now. She just, I got to show you this picture. I'm going to see if you can see it. Because you can't <laughs> tell her anything. She's 61. She'll be 62 in March. Look how fabulous she looks. Oh, oh look at mama. Is and it, is mama your, was a size 16, 18. Is your mama married? Yes, so mind your business. <laughs> she ain't available. It ain't for me. <laughs> I was I was just gonna put on the market for all the rest of the fellas. Oh, no, 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 no. She off. She off the market. <laughs> She's so, off the market. Okay. Um, she said, "My kid, you're not gonna leave me in the fat girl club. I'm I'm going with." Heather. <laughs> I hear that. And so, so for 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 the listening audience and people looking at. How they saying, okay, Coach Mike here. All right, Finch, I hear you guys talking. I, I'm looking at myself with double chins, fat necks, rolls around, you know, all these things that, of excess that I have within my body. However, my mental, my mental stability is not where it needs to be for me to move forward. What would you tell them? So I'm actually coaching people personally now through that process because I know exactly what that looks like and what it feels mm. like. I know what it feels like to be or have the feeling of defeat resting on you because when you get to a certain point, you've already told yourself it's never going to get better. So when you have that negative self-talk, one of the quotes that I love is by Henry Ford, whether you think you can or you think you can't, you're absolutely right. And so when I stopped believing that that was all I could do and all I could be, and I started believing more for myself, I started to have small victories every mm. single day. And I follow an amazing man by the name of Eric Thomas. Eric Thomas had a shirt that he had printed out in 2019. And it said, 2019 goals, execute, execute, execution. I said, well, I don't have no help at home with this execution. Mm. I don't have any accountability partners with this execution. So do I make an excuse again and mm. say, well, since nobody's holding my hand, since nobody's helping me, since nobody's going to the gym with me, I can't. Or do I kick my own butt and say, you're going to do this on your own. And you're going to hold yourself accountable to these 2019 goals. And this is what you're going to execute. Finch, I wore that shirt to work every day for 60 days until I could no longer fit it. So when the people at work saw me, you know, I'm a librarian by trade. They were like, you're not going to do that. I said, the kids wear a school uniform. And at the end of the day, it's not about y'all. It's about me. So I put that shirt on and I wore it every day until it didn't fit. And it began to give me more confidence as I saw my goals take place, but it started with me having a mindset of I can do it. And then even if I didn't believe it, I kept going until I did believe it. Now you wore this shirt every day for 60 days. Did it, did it every experience day any days. washes in between them 60 no. days? <laughs> you got to ask you, got to <laughs> okay, you, you got to ask. You said 60 days in a row. No, you for was real. inspired. <laughs> I, yeah, no, seriously. Because in my mind, I had to give myself something that I could focus on when everything else was going crazy around me, right? Mm -hmm. Could I con continue to let my environment control my circumstances or do I begin to control my environment and say to hell with my circumstances, this mm -hmm. has to happen, right? 
And I didn't know that transforming would change lives. I didn't know that I would end up in total life changes. I just knew I needed to get healthier because I wanted to live. And so from there, this lady that worked at my job in a wheelchair, she was like, I want to live too. She was overweight. You know, she lost 50 pounds in 30 days. Wow. People began to get inspired. And so now I'm not just doing this for me. I'm like, man, people watching me. I didn't do this for y'all to watch me. But now y'all clinging on to me for hope. And it's like, well, I can't stop now. I got to keep getting fine. <laughs> you own 30,000 right now. What's in that drink you drinking? I, I need some of that. <laughs> This is my CBD tea, but I already had my NRG and my Nutriverse. <laughs> now you're gonna have to talk English because us us layman people don't understand all them letters you just use. <laughs> don't spit out okay. your good drink now. Don't spit out your good drink. I'm not gonna do that because it's too expensive. So this is the detox tea that I'm drinking. Okay. This is our yellow CBD tea. And then I mix it with raspberry. So it's like raspberry lemonade. Okay. Like raspberry lemonade, but it ain't raspberry lemonade, right? No, because raspberry lemonade is actually terrible for you. It's too much sugar. <laughs> okay. You know what I got in my cup? Whiskey. <laughs> <laughs> I got some of that Boom Farm moonshine you mixing over there. <laughs> I got some Hennessy in my cup, okay? <laughs> I ain't mad at you, brother. Do your thing. <laughs> <laughs> That's just water. Just H2O. <laughs> yeah. That's all. That's all they allow me to put in my cup. Oh, I'm so sorry to hear that. <laughs> yeah. All right. So, so uh, drive by, divorce. Did all these things happen in the same year? No. So we know that the drive by happened in 2015. Okay. The divorce will actually be physically final. Hallelujah. <laughs> March 15th. <laughs> so that started taking place over the summer, and I didn't see that coming. I I saw the end kind of coming because you you see it coming once it's getting closer. Um, but I didn't see all the things that were transpiring through the process of the divorce. I didn't know that I would have to have meetings with DCFS and be accused of things that were not even true, but having to fight situations and circumstances that were unnecessary, right? But mentally taxing while mm -hmm. I'm encouraging other people, while I'm inspiring other people, I got a battle that nobody knows that's going on, you know, and, mm -hmm. and, and being told that I'm, and I'm just going to be very transparent because I don't know what anybody else is going through, but if you've ever been under the assassination of your character, the defamation of your character. It's almost like I'd rather you just take me out than take out my name because your name is all you have, you know? And so then I'm being told and, and the people on my team were being told, oh, she's going to go to jail, you know, for the attempted murder of her husband and her. I mean, it was just like malicious story after malicious story. And you know how people are. We're simple. Mm. Right. Yeah. Most of us are very surface. We only need to get the whisper of one thing to take off running. And right. there's even a video of a man at the church where he says, you know, watch what happens when one black person runs. Mm. They all go running. And so because that person that I was married to was so charming and debonair and could get anybody to hear and listen to whatever he said, they listened and they believed him. So, of course, I never went to jail. Of course, I never was found guilty by DCFS. But it was the fact that I had to go through that unnecessarily and be tortured and tormented, you know, over things that. Were, were complete lies and to give the way that I gave, you know, to that man, to his children and everything that took place, it was way more heartening, disheartening than anything else. And so the drive by and the divorce didn't take place at the same time, but it was with the same person. OK, OK. Now, now having achieved the things you achieve mentally and physically with your body, because I mean, to lose 70 pounds is, is definitely a great feat. And we we commend you for that. But Thank now you. having to now climb the mountain of uh, a relationship faltering or falling and you having to deal with a lot of issues privately that, you know, while you in turn have to stay motivated to encourage so many other people who count on you for hope. Yeah. How did that affect your psyche? So it tore me up mentally. Because at some point, even if you're the strong person or the strongest person that people know, it does not mean that you don't get tired of mm -hmm. fighting and battling. And so something that God did for me is um, a live I created called Shifting Sundays. He had began to whisper to me that it was time to shift and it was time to move. And you know how we don't listen right away. We don't execute right away. We hold on to things and, and we think maybe I didn't hear what I heard, but you heard exactly what I said. Right. And so I was a little hard headed and that's what made this a lot longer process than was necessary. And 
I came out of that situation and I just began to talk to myself. Remember that positive self-talk we just talked about? I had to do that over again for a total different reason. And I had to remind myself, you will live and not die. I had to remind Mm. myself, you are the head and not the tail. You are above and not beneath. You are the lender and not the... Like I had to remind myself of who God called me to be. And sometimes I really downplay the things that I've done and the things that I've created because I don't look for rewards or accolades or anything. I just do what I do because I love what I do. I love to serve. I love to mentor young girls. And that was another thing that stayed on my heart. You know, these girls look up to me. Mm. I can't fall when one of the responsibilities is to make sure they never fall. Or if they do fall, I have to show them how to get up again. And so even in the midst of what I was going through, I said, God, you gave me this so that not only people can be inspired, but they'll actually have action that they can follow. And Mm -hmm. so I started shifting Sundays. We do it on Instagram. And I did it initially every Sunday for an entire month. And so many people were inspired. And I didn't even know that my transparency and my life story was going to help other people get out of the things that they were in. Yeah. When you think about your voice, you have a powerful voice when you are in your your moment, when you are in the coach moment. Right. You have a powerful, resounding voice. Wow. Thank you. So when you look at because there are some times that you don't feel as confident with that voice, that authentic voice that you have. Right. Yeah. You you you, you don't feel like the voice is the one because. You play this role, right? You have the coach. Then that's my Kia. Absolutely. All right? Absolutely. Two, two different people. One, and, and let me be clear. She's not being phony or fake. They're two different personas of, of a person. They're two people that live inside her one body. Right? Right. Okay. Sometimes three, but yeah, two for sure. <laughs> We're going to talk about the other one later. <laughs> <laughs> see, see, I didn't want to break out that other one just yet, but you brought it out, so we're gonna talk about that one later. <laughs> but that's a battle for you, right? Between the two, because one wants to be heard more than the other, and Absolutely. the other don't really care about the accolades and applause, but the voice is one and the same necessary, right? Absolutely. That's true. So, so how do you move from one to the next? when you feel lost in them both at times? Ooh, that's a good question. You see how we cut y'all over here on the fence? We get everybody off the fence now. Well, no, because the thing is, one is really always in the gym, but the other one shows up when there are teachable moments that have to take place that are outside of what I do as your volleyball coach, Mm. right? I find myself having conversations with these young ladies that really become about life. And so the, the, the two really balance themselves. Sometimes I don't always want to be the one who has to talk about life and inspiration because it becomes taxing and it becomes draining, but it's also a calling. Yeah. And so even when I don't feel like it, I submit to it because I know it's my responsibility. Yeah. Sometimes you just want to, to somebody to, help you laugh throughout the evening, throughout the night. You know, you, you want to escape a lot of times, right? No, I do. Like, I, can you send me a vacation trip? You know, <laughs> does that show you? Just show that, you know, do that or, or what's up? <laughs> and you on, have brother. won yourself a new vacation. No, no, come no. on. <laughs> With COVID, what's open? Just send me where they open. <laughs> well, out here in LA, nothing's open. <laughs> so. right. Oh, man, right. Gyms are nothing nothing's open all right so if people want to connect with you online how, how can they do so so i'm on instagram at coach mikea which is down there at the bottom and in my uh, bio is my link tree so everything that i do is inside of my link tree you don't have to go to facebook facebook is so dated uh, mm. and it moves so slow so i really just operate and do everything on instagram mm-hmm. all right so this 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 uh stuff you keep in the basement I ain't talking about the basement of your home either. <laughs> what you talking about, Willis? <laughs> oh, you know what I'm talking about. So that stuff you've packed up and put in the basement internally. Mm. When are we going to let that out? Um, After the 15th, when I can legally say way more than I can say now. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> Here's the great thing about where you are. 
and where you'll go. The stuff in the basement that you put in the see, you didn't just put it in the suitcase. You put it in a storage locker. You wrapped a bunch of chains around it. You put a big boat on it, right? How you know? <laughs> Y'all don't believe me. I'm good at this. Okay, I'm good at this. But those things that you put in there don't define you as a person. Mm. They won't. They they won't even translate with where you're going. So you gotta you gotta take it out the basement and go dump it in the river. And let it drown mm. because it's anchoring you know what i'm saying it's holding you down in one particular moment and you're allowing it to define who you are but it's not who you are so right. you got you got to take it out to the pasture like a oh whatever and you got to drown it you got to allow it to sink and you ain't got to wait till the 15th to do that <laughs> i don't have to wait till the 15th to be free is what you're saying nope. i'm free now who the sign says free it's free indeed. Yeah. No, that that's real. This process has, it has really done a number as far as uh, um, teaching me, number one, about people. Number two, about process, position, and power. Mm. Because people will try to take power over your position when you're not sure in who you are and what you're called to do. And every time I look at what I I'm called to do. There are some things in that basement that you didn't talked about where it's like, man, is that really it? And can I really do this with all of this going on? Because we are so used to being judged by people versus just being who you're called to be, regardless mm -hmm. of what people are thinking, assuming or doing. And that's been the whole shifting Sunday process. So the shifting has not been completed. I've still been shifting. Yeah. Yeah. You are a lovely woman. And thank you. You have a kind heart. You have a loving heart. I mean, so many people in your life take advantage of your love and, and compassion. And I want you to be encouraged by not allowing takers mm. to take away from how you are as a person. You know, sometimes when, when people are delving into our bag and they're always taking, 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 they're not pointing anything in, right? Um, a good friend of mine is Kiana Dancy. I don't know if you know her. She's a comedian. Uh, she taught me this in the clubhouse, actually. Mm. We got to learn how to pour from our. Uh, so we, we allow people to take from our cup. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, absolutely. But we got to learn how to pour from our cup into our saucer and allow them mm. to take from the saucer so they don't deplete the cup. That's you understand good. what I'm saying? So absolutely. you got to allow the cup to stay full while you just pour a little bit out at a time versus allowing people to just come take from the cup. Because once the cup empty. They all gone and they're not right. putting they back into what they the need. Yeah, they've gotten <laughs> what they need. So, so I encourage you to start pouring out of your cup into your saucer and allowing the people to take from the saucer so that you don't deplete yourself because that's many times, many nights, many moments you are exhausted. And it ain't just from working out. I've seen your workout videos. You, you don't pop, you know, but it ain't from your workout. It's from what no, you No, you're right. From for real. You. That's the truth. Yeah. Yeah. So, so start pouring into your saucer. Uh, unpack that stuff in your basement and you're going to be all right, my friend. <laughs> Thank you, Finch. I appreciate that. <laughs> I appreciate that, man. Hey, it's been a blast, man. Uh, we got to do this again very soon. We do with the ro the roles reversed, though. Oh, oh let's, let's get it, okay? <laughs> let's go. <laughs> Dig into your basement a little bit. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Yo, 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 yo. You're in the mix. The world's finest, man. DJ. Now. I have the radio on the telly. You're in the mix, Lord. All the fence with me.